Great to have you back in the fourth lesson on waves and what you learn is one, what is the velocity of a wave as it moves forward and two, what is the velocity and acceleration of a point on a wave in a direction perpendicular to the motion of the wave at different times. And I think this lesson is going to be a lot easier than what you've learned in wave so far, which by the way was not easy stuff. So you can pat your back that you have come so far. So what you learned in the last lesson was that the equation y is equal to a cos kx minus omega t gives y the vertical displacement of a point at position x and time t. And using this equation, you can find the velocity of the wave as it moves forward in this direction. To find this velocity, I would like you to imagine that you are actually moving alongside the wave. So you're not moving on the waves, but parallel to it in the positive x direction. So as this wave moves forward, each point of this moving wave form, such as point A, must retain its displacement y. And while I say this, I'd like to remind you that points on the string do not retain the displacement, but points on the waveform do. So if point A retains its displacement as it moves forward, the phase in this equation that gives this displacement must remain a constant, or you can say that kx minus omega t should be a constant. Again, while this expression is a constant, x and t are changing but they're changing in a way that this expression remains a constant value and if you observe the expression a little closely you'll find that as t increases x must also increase to keep this value a constant this in a way validates that wave pattern is indeed moving in the positive x direction so this makes things a lot easier for us the wave speed we can now be found by taking derivative of x with respect to time. So if we reject this equation, what you get is kx is equal to a constant plus omega t. And if you divide both sides by k, what you get is a constant divided by k would be a constant and you'll get a k over here. So what you get is x is equal to another constant plus omega upon k times t. And if you now take a differential of x with respect to t, what you'll get is dx upon dt is equal to differential of constant will be a zero. And what you'll get is dx upon dt is equal to omega upon k. Or in other words, the velocity in x direction is equal to omega upon k. But we also know that k can be written as equal to 2 pi upon lambda. And we also know that omega can be written as equal to 2 pi upon t. And if you go ahead and substitute these values in this equation, what you get is v is equal to 2 pi upon t divided by k, which you've taken as 2 pi upon lambda, and therefore velocity v equals lambda upon t, which in turn can be written as equal to lambda f, where f is the frequency, because 1 upon capital T is nothing but the frequency f. In fact, the expression v is equal to lambda upon t shows that the wave velocity is one wavelength per time period or the wave moves a distance of one wavelength that is lambda in one period of oscillation well if the wave is moving in negative x direction that is if the equation was not this but the equation was let us say y is equal to a cos of kx plus omega t instead of minus omega t and we learned in the earlier lesson that if you want to represent a equation which is moving in negative x direction you switch this negative sign over here to a 
positive sign and you will get the equation of a wave traveling in the negative x direction. So if this is the case, then once again, we can put kx plus omega t as a constant. And if you go through the same exercise of differentiating x with respect to t, what you'll get is dx upon dt equals minus omega upon k, which shows that indeed this wave is traveling in the negative x direction, the way this equation was intended to represent a wave moving in the negative x direction. So what we've done so far is establish the speed of wave in x direction. So let us go ahead and find what is the speed of a particle on the wave in the y direction. So we are done with the movement or the velocity of the wave in x direction. Now we want to find the velocity of the particles of the medium in the y direction or perpendicular to the wave. Well, it's going to be quite easy. We know that displacement of a particle on a wave is given by the equation y x t, which essentially means the y displacement of any particle at time t and at position x is equal to a cos of kx plus omega t. We can therefore establish the velocity of a point on the wave, the old fashioned way, by way of finding dy upon dt. So what we need to do is simply find dy upon dt. The only thing to remember here is that when you take dy upon dt, you're finding for a particular point x, or in other words, x is a constant, you're dealing with a certain point on the wave, and therefore you are assuming x is a constant. In mathematics, we call this a partial derivative, that is y x t can be found for various x and t values, but we decide to keep x a constant and let y, that is a perpendicular displacement, vary with time. And this is shown like this instead of the usual dy upon dt. So do not worry about this little piece of unfamiliar symbol that actually is quite useful. Nevertheless, for now, we'll avoid using it. So we can say that dy upon dt, keeping x as a constant, what we get is dy upon dt is equal to omega a sine of kx plus omega t. So what we've done is cos changes to sine and you've got to differentiate the stuff which is inside and you get an omega outside. And let's say this is your velocity in perpendicular direction or the y direction. Now, this is the expression for the velocity of a point in the perpendicular direction. You can also find the acceleration of this point in y direction and all we need to do is differentiate dy upon dt once again. So if acceleration in the y direction is represented by ay and this is equal to d2y upon dt2, this would equal to, you can see, minus omega square a cos of kx plus omega t. And remember, x again is a constant here. We are dealing with one particle at a time. Well, you can again see that a cos kx plus omega t is nothing but the displacement of the particle in the y direction. So we can write that, well, a y or the acceleration in y direction is nothing but minus omega square y x t, which you can see is the classic simple harmonic motion equation. Well, you can make a couple of other observations like this equation over here shows that the transverse velocity or the velocity in the y direction of a particle varies with time as we expect for simple harmonic motion to be. So you can also see that omega a is the maximum velocity because the maximum value this can attain is 1. Also, uh, the maximum particle speed can be greater than, less than, or equal to the wave speed. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.